Life without electricity. Can you imagine? Your phone would run out of juice and you wouldn't be able to charge it. You wouldn't be able to watch awesome Lego videos on YouTube. No! Don't panic though. Today we're going to delve into the world of energy, where it comes from and what the future looks like. And done! Ta-da! Ah, looking great! What? How do you like it? Oh. So, how do you make electricity? Well, with some really cool science, of course. If you take some copper wire, here it's wrapped up in a coil, and then you move a strong magnet through the coil like this, you can, hey, generate electricity. When the magnet is moving, an electric current flows through the wire to light up this bulb. When the magnet is still, the current stops. And this is all thanks to something called electromagnetism. Of course, this tiny magnet isn't going to be able to produce enough electric current to power the whole country. So that's where power stations come in. They do something like this on a much, much bigger scale. It works like this. Fuel is burned to heat up water. The hot water makes steam, which rises up and turns a turbine. That turbine turns a coil of wire, moving it past a magnet and generating electricity. In most countries, the fuel we burn is coal, oil or natural gas. These are all called fossil fuels because, like fossils, they're dug up out of the ground. Ready when you are, boss. Are we ready? Sure. Get the TNT ready. We're ready. OK, fire in the hall. <gasps> Oh, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like gold to me. Dragon! <laughs> Fossil fuels are also called that because, like fossils, they're made of dead animals and plants, which means your electricity comes from dead dinosaurs. Oh. Well, not exactly, but it comes from their favourite food. Let me explain. Fossil fuels were made during the Mesozoic period, when dinosaurs roamed the Earth. As plants on land and in the ocean died, they got buried by sand at the bottom of rivers and the sea. Then over millions of years, all that heavy sand above squashed and heated them, turning them into coal, oil and gas. If they died on land, they became coal, and if they died in the sea, they ended up as oil and gas. This process means it takes a long time to make fossil fuels, and the problem is that we're digging them up way faster than they're made, which means that once they're all used up, they're gone for good. And that's why we call them non-renewable. What a lovely day for a wee bit of fishing. Oh, here we go. Oh, look at the size of this laddie. Just put you there. Oh, another bite. Uh -oh. oh, he's got me. Ah. Oh. Get off me, you big brute. <laughs> Scientists think we've only got enough oil to last us for another 30 years or so. Coal and gas will last longer, but if we keep using it at the speed we are now, it'll all be gone before 2090. And there's also another major problem with fossil fuels. They're really bad for the environment. Mining for coal and drilling for oil and gas destroys habitats for plants and animals, and burning them causes global warming and climate change. So we need a solution. And that's where renewable energy comes in. As you might have guessed from its name, renewable energy comes from sources that, unlike fossil fuels, renew. They don't get entirely used up. There are a few different types though, so let's take a closer look at just one or two of them. You might have seen these dotted around the countryside. They're wind turbines designed to use the wind to create electricity. For that reason, they're most often put high up on hills or way out to sea where there's lots of wind blowing. If you look closely at the blades on a wind turbine, you'll see that they're not exactly flat, they're actually slightly angled. 
This means that when air blows against them, it gets pushed to one side. Then thanks to Newton's third law, which says that every action has an equal and opposite reaction, the blade gets pushed to the other side. And because the blades are fixed to a rotating spindle in the centre, the air's push works to spin it, like this. <laughs> oh, what a lovely day. Oh, 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 Ouch! On a windy day, these are great because a constantly rotating turbine is exactly what we need to make electricity. It constantly moves a coil of wire past a magnet, and thanks to that nifty electromagnetism, we get lots of electricity produced. Also, the wind is only being used to rotate the turbine, so it's not being used up in the same way fossil fuels are. And the Earth will always keep making more wind, so it's completely renewable. Other sources of renewable energy use the movement of water to turn a turbine and create energy. Hydroelectric power is generated by water that travels downhill from a reservoir, and wave and tidal power make electricity from the motion of the ocean. All renewable, all clean. Another kind of renewable energy that doesn't use a turbine is a solar panel. You might have seen solar panels like this one on people's roofs or huge arrays of them out in fields. They're made of a special material that can absorb light energy from the sun and convert it directly into electrical energy that can power your home. And they're really quite effective. If you took a patch of land that was 100 miles by 100 miles and covered it in solar panels, you'd make enough electricity to power the whole of the United States. The only issue is that because they need light to make electricity, they don't work so well on cloudy days or at night, which has led scientists to make a very cool suggestion to put solar panels on the moon. <laughs> There's always a part of the moon that's facing the sun, there's no clouds, and there's definitely plenty of empty land. All we'd have to do is beam the energy back down to Earth, and we could get rid of power stations altogether. Given that our fossil fuels are running out, and they're bad for the environment, using clean, renewable energy like wind, wave, and solar power is really important. They have the right idea. Right now, almost a quarter of all the electricity generated around the world is from renewable sources. Lego HQ in Denmark gets about half of all the electricity it needs from more than 4,000 solar panels on its roof. And on a good day, in the rest of Denmark, wind turbines can produce enough energy for the entire country with plenty to spare for its neighbours. I guess you could say that they're a big fan of wind power. Get it? Big fan? Hmm. So, next time you turn on your lights or charge your phone, have a think about where your electricity is coming from. And that's all from us. Let us know what questions you'd like answered in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome videos.